SharePoint sites are internal websites that allow you to easily organize and share information. In this video, I'm not going to show you just how to create these sites, but I'm going to show you how we can utilize the features to filter out information that your team can focus on what matters most. Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. Here we are in SharePoint. We can head on up to this plus icon to create a site. And there are two different types of SharePoint sites to create. The first one is a team site. We can think about this as being a department or a team to manage a project. Alternatively, we have a communication site. So we can think about like an HR policies site to communicate to our whole organization. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are opening up a Vancouver flagship store. So let's go ahead and create a team site. From here, we have a ton of delicious templates from crisis communication to project management or even a training site. At my old organization, I created a very in-depth training manual using just SharePoint sites. If you are looking for some more inspiration, then head on over to lookbook.microsoft.com and they have a handful of stunning sites to get those creative juices flowing. So let's select a standard team and you can see here all of the capabilities and features that are included in that template. From here, we will give our site a name, which in this case will be the Vancouver flagship location. You can pop in a description as well. And just note that there's going to be this group email address created. And then this will be the site address for your SharePoint site. From here, we have further options to define our privacy settings. I'm going to go ahead and keep this private so that it is just going to be limited to the Vancouver flagship location team. From here, we can now add our members. And if you're in the creation stages of a site, then I would recommend keeping it to yourself. You're probably going to want some help as well. Maintaining these sites can be a lot of work. So just go ahead and make sure that you have some other members as owners. Here we are in our SharePoint site and a navigation menu has already been created. And the main area of this page is created of little web parts, including this documents library. So let's go ahead and drag and drop our policies and procedures word document. And then if we select this, see all, it will take us to the documents tab on the navigation menu. But I did wanna highlight some of the key features here. So SharePoint libraries allow us to create folders. So for example, we could call this one SOP and even give it a color. So this is going to be your folder view that you might be familiar with. And a great feature of SharePoint document libraries is the ability to add metadata. You can see here that we have a handful of different options that we can add for additional columns. I like to personally use the choice column and we will call it stage. So this will be different stages of the planning project. This is going to create a flat document library and allows you to further customize and filter files. Once you've finished creating the column, then we can go ahead and edit this in grid view. And then just simply from this drop down menu, just select the different category that this falls under. Okay, so this page is looking a little bit boring. Let's go and head up to this edit icon and we can start to customize it. So the first thing that I want to add will be a countdown timer. And this will just indicate how many days we are until opening of the new flagship location. So we will call this the opening day countdown. And if it was 23 hours away, I would not be creating this video. So from here, we can select the date as well as the time. So you have a fair bit of functionality. I'm going to go ahead and select Canada Day. That will be July 1st. And I also just like to display this as days only just so that we can isolate the key information. From here, we can also go ahead and add a background image. I'm going to upload this image of Rue from my desktop. Look at that, she's going to be cheering us on as we count down our timer. The next section that we are going to add will be an organizational chart. So this way we can easily identify who our project managers are so that the rest of the team has full transparency on who to go to with any questions. But now I would like to assign some tasks and create a plan for this new flagship location. So let's go ahead and select save as draft. 
And then from this new carrot, we can drop down and select plan. So here we will create a planner plan called new flagship location plan. And I'm going to leave this show in site navigation ticked and click create. And here is our plan. So we can see how ticking that show in site navigation has now added this plan to a page on the left navigation menu. And we have started to build out our tasks. This planner plan, if we say planner plan one more time, it's kind of difficult to say, but we do have all of these different options as well as views as you would with any other planner plan. To add this into the home page, let's head on up to that page and select edit. And now we can select add. And here we will search for plan and select planner. And there you go. So now we have that planner plan that has automatically pulled through. If you have a different plan in your site, then you can always select that from the drop down menu on the right hand side, as well as change the view. So in this case, I just want a summary of the status of the plan. So a little bit of a progress tracker. Before we move on, let's go ahead and just give this a title. We definitely believe in giving our team positive feedback. So let's say nice job team. And the next thing that we want to add will be a list. I'm sure that we're going to run in some issues. We want to be sure that we are tracking those and staying on top of them. Let's go ahead and select issue tracker template and use this template. I will give this a name and we will call it flagship location issues. And this time I'm going to untick the show in site navigation and create that list. Here is our list and we can see that there are already a couple of issues in progress. For example, the animals are protesting against the outdoor fence. So this is a new issue. I want to add this list to our homepage, but I want to have it so that only the new issues are visible. So in order to do that, we will select all items and go create new view. I will call it new items and we will simply create. Now we can filter this status bar and just select new so that we will only see those new items. And then from this drop down menu on the top right, we will go save view as, and we will keep that as new items and click save. Back in the edit view, let's go ahead and add a web part for a list. If we search lists, we're going to select this list and there is that new list that we just created. So let's go ahead and select that list and we can see it populate. But we have both of these list items here. So if we go ahead and select this edit icon and under view, we will just go ahead and select new items and then click apply. So now we can see how that filter has now been applied to this homepage, which is amazing. And I'm just going to rename this. The next thing that we will add is a page for feedback as well as a form. We always value feedback from our employees so that we can get better. So let's go ahead and add a new page. From here, I'll just select this blank page. And then at the bottom, depending on who you've already added to this site, you might want to create this as a private draft. Alternatively, we can just select create page. I will go ahead and give this page a title and we will call it employee feedback. This page is going to include a form. So let's go ahead and browse some stock images, see what we can find for a form. This one here looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and select insert. Then we've also got a couple of options here. I really like this image and title view. And if we select this pencil icon, then we can also add some text show up above the title. All right, we are ready to create our form. But before that, let's just add some text here. And if you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up as it really helps me out. Let's go ahead and now add a new section to this page for our form. And we can search for form in the web parts. There we go, Microsoft Forms. That's what we are looking for. Now, if you've already got a form saved to this SharePoint site or within this Microsoft team, then you can click add existing form. In our case, we will add a new form. We will give it a name, flagship location feedback and go ahead and click create. Here we are in Microsoft Forms. I have Copilot, so I'm going to prompt Copilot to generate a simple feedback form, but you can customize this as you would with any other Microsoft form. 
This here looks perfect. I just wanted it to be simple. So let's go ahead and keep it. Back in SharePoint, we can see that our form has now been added to this page, which is awesome. And then on the right hand side here, we have some additional options. If you want employees to be able to collect responses from this page, then you can have the actual form show up here or you can show form results. I want to collect responses on this page. So let's go ahead and click OK. Our employee feedback page is now ready. So let's go ahead and publish this to our site. Once that is published, there's going to be some quick action links here. So if you wanted to, for example, add it to the page navigation so that it would show up on the left hand side, then you could easily do that. Alternatively, we can go ahead and select post as news on this site. Back on that home page, if we scroll on down to that default news web part, then we can see that that employee feedback post has been shared as well as another news article about the animals protesting against the fence. So that issue seems to be quite a hot topic right now. What I'd like to do now is organize this news section Let's head on back into the edit tab. We can select this news part, easily change the layout. So I particularly enjoy the side by side. And then if we select the pencil icon to edit the web part, there is a surprising number of options here for updating the layout. One that I find particularly helpful is the ability to filter filtered out all other news on the SharePoint site. Everything on this page right now is just lumped into one massive section. So let's add another section to provide some order. So from this plus icon, I like to go ahead and add the vertical section, and then we can easily drag and drop these web parts over to the right hand side. And I'm just going to pop these quick links over there as well. For this quick link section, it is super easy to manage. So we can easily add or delete or even edit these links. From this page, we have a handful of options. So this is going to be all of your recent items. Another key area is this site. So from the site, we can go to documents and then this is going to be that document library that we created earlier. So you can easily link any documents within the SharePoint site. Alternatively, if we head over to site pages, then these are going to be all of the pages on your SharePoint site, which is really great for making internal connections. The last one that I commonly use would be the from a link. So this is great if you are going to be adding external links and you want to provide those resources to your team. To Office Skills with Amy YouTube channels so that everyone on this site can easily access that. We can give it a name and there we go. So we can see how this quick links, you can kind of think of these as like bookmarks and just providing those resources to everyone at their fingertips. We can also just drag and drop this activity feed to the bottom right. And this can get a little bit overwhelming. So I'm just going to limit this to four items. All right, this is coming along, but how about a section at the top to do some key areas? So let's go ahead and search for hero. This one is such a great layout. In our instance, I want to add that issues list that we created earlier. So this is going to be under the recent items. And then from this pencil icon, we will give this a name. And for this background image, you can see that it's doing auto select. In this case, let's go ahead and change this photo because we are adding a list. Why don't we just go ahead and search list, just insert an image from stock. There are just a couple more options here. I feel like this call to action button is looking a little bit cluttered, so we can just turn that off. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing and we will pull in that planner plan. Great, now that we have those two in there, we can go ahead and just adjust this to be two tiles only. If you prefer layers, then you can definitely do that and build them out a bit more. We can see how this now takes us to that flagship location issues list, as well as to our planner plan. But let's now just go ahead and create a three column window. We can drag these documents there. We just wanna have those key items so that they're easily visible when people land on this page. We can easily edit this section and we can just one column and we will also just make this section collapsible and we can give it a name. I find that this can just help simplify some of the content on your page. Woohoo, this page 
looks amazing. Let's go ahead and publish this now. All right, this left navigation menu is looking a little bit clustered and I also want to add that employee feedback page that we created earlier. So let's go ahead and select pages. From here, we can see that here is that employee feedback page. If I just click on that and select copy link, then we can now edit this left navigation menu and add that link here. We will give this a name of feedback and we will click OK. We can see that this is now being added to that navigation menu. And if I just want to drag and drop this up here, then we can do that as well as make this a sublink. So we can see how easy it is to update this left navigation menu. By All right, we are almost there. So from the top menu, let's select this next steps and head on down to change the look. From here, there are a couple of themes. Let's make this the teal theme. And we'll notice how these buttons and all of these little call to action items have now updated. There are also some options to edit the header area as well as your logo and thumbnail as well as the navigation menu. So if you prefer, then you can even move this to the horizontal. Then it's going to show at the top menu here. This SharePoint site is really starting to look like a web page now. And when you are ready, you can go ahead and add additional members on the top right. The last thing that I want to show you is how we can take the SharePoint site and bring it into Microsoft Teams. Every Microsoft Teams team automatically created a SharePoint site. Go the other way, we need to do it manually. Now note that this add real-time chat button is only available when this left navigation menu is on the left. So with that being said, let's go ahead now and select add Microsoft Teams. We can go ahead and push through these prompts. And this is just an area where you can select which items you want to pin to your Teams channel. So let's go ahead and add that SharePoint list for issues. And here we are within Teams and we can see that, that flagship location issues list that we created has now been pinned to the top tabs here. And if we want to add that SharePoint site to our Teams channel, then we just need to search for SharePoint. And I'm just going to select SharePoint. If we head to this pages, then we can scroll on down and select that home page. And last but not least, if you're wondering where your files are, you will have to head on up into documents. And that wraps up this video. And I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. We will see you in the next video.